Okay, we're making an easel, take one. Okay class, um, today we are starting to work from home. And so the first thing you're gonna need to do is figure out an easel to put your painting on. Um, I have a little French easel. Um, and so this is what I use to work from home, um, but not everyone has access to that. So I'm gonna show you how to make an easel uh, using a medium-sized Amazon box. So this is an option, basically a free option. Hopefully you guys have a box in your house, doesn't have to be an Amazon box. Um, this has a little angle and you can basically just put your canvas right on there. That little angle will hold um, hold the canvas from falling forward. Okay. So we're going to start out with our box and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tape it, tape it up. Okay, we need to get it so it's a rigid, just a rigid closed box. I'm just using some packing tape. So I guess what you need is packing tape, a box, a ruler, a marker, and a box cutter, which I'll talk about a little later. All right, I'm gonna put a little, one more piece of tape on there. And it's good to close up all the sides on the box. Those of you guys who haven't mastered the art of using packing tape, now is your chance. It was always a little bit of a mystery to me, but um, you can use the little teeth to make sure the tape tears. Anyone tempted to use their mouth? Let's stay away from that at this present time. And history. Whoa, big storm. Can y'all hear that? Okay, um, so I've got a box. So this is the start of the easel. All the sides are taped. And I'm just going to start making some marks. So the first mark I'm going to make is a three inch mark back. And I'm going to use a Sharpie marker and it's any color is fine. I'm going to mark at three inches back. And I'm going to make sure that mark goes over onto the top. Then I'm going to go over to the side and I'm going to mark eight inches down. And I'm going to use the ruler, the right angle of the ruler, to, um, to make that angled mark at the bottom. Do you see that? Do you see how that mark isn't, isn't quite horizontal or parallel with the box, but it's at a little bit of an angle? Let's see, I might have just blocked that, but hopefully you can see. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over to the other side. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna make a three inch mark back. I'm gonna make sure it rounds over to the top. An eight inch mark down. There we go. And I'm gonna use, let's see. Got myself a little twisted here. I'm gonna use the right angle of the ruler to make sure this is at an angle. Okay, now I'm just gonna make sure these lines cross. So I'm gonna flip this mark up to the top, use the ruler, and pull that through. I'm gonna do the same thing at the top here. I kinda already, already rounded them over, um, so that's good. Makes it a little bit easier. Okay, let me just look and make sure, yep, I've got all those sides marked out. Now it's time for a box cutter. Um, the biggest thing about a box cutter is you don't want to cut your finger. Um, if you cut your finger, make sure to have a band-aid. Um, a box cutter is really handy um, because it has little snap-off blades 
little snap off areas. So at some point, if the blade gets dull, you can actually snap it. Um, you can snap off a little piece. Now this piece is really, really sharp. So before you throw it out, make sure to put it in some tape. Um, otherwise someone taking out the trash might get a big surprise, an unwelcome surprise. Okay, so now I have my super sharp box cutter. I'm gonna make sure not to cut my hands. So I'm gonna keep my fingers away. I'm gonna move that in a little bit. I'm just gonna pull back towards me in kind of a controlled manner. Um, if I went too fast, I might wanna slice my leg, which wouldn't be good. So I'm just gonna pull back. And I'm gonna follow the red line. Following the red line. Following the red line and following the red line. Now, boxes have some cardboard inside of them. Um, so you're actually gonna have to cut that too. Okay, so I had, to, I had to cut that also. And I'm gonna go over to the other side and I'm just gonna cut that little piece. So I'm just cutting that off, tossing it over to the side. Now I've got these two little flaps on the inside which I'm also gonna tape down just so I can make sure that my canvas sits properly. Okay, y'all see that? All right, so I'm just, I'm just taping that down on the inside. Okay, we're almost ready to paint. Here's the banana on red, everybody. Oh, yeah, one other thing I almost forgot. If I was starting to paint on this, my brush might start to scoot this easel across the table. Um, and so what I'm going to do uh, to set up the home easel with the cardboard box, um, the home easel make you, with the cardboard box, yeah, is I'm going to use a little bit of this blue tape. So this is a low tack painter's tape. So it's a little bit less sticky than the packing tape. If you have um, sort of a, a garage table that you don't mind getting messed up, you might be able to use the packing tape. It's gonna be a lot stronger, but the blue tape won't hurt most surfaces. Please don't put it on your parents' best table, but uh, you know, maybe you can consult with them before you tape it down to anything. I've got an Ikea table here, which is essentially made of plastic, um, so I'm not too worried about it. I have a scrub Sharpie marker and all sorts of other things off this table, um, and it, it's still, it's still going. So here we go. I'm just kind of, uh, all right, taping it down. And now uh, if I use the brush and start to paint, we should be good to go.